Okay, so uh, I'm going to work on this Pimeroni Pico display. I'm looking forward to this. Um, but first of all, I've got to solder some headers onto one of my pie boards. So let's just get that done. Now it says to use this, I've got to have the uh, headers pins pointing down. So I'm going to do some old school soldering. I've got my old Weller soldering iron out. And uh, let's just work out the header pins. So I'm going to need... Oop, that many okay, that will just snip aha and it's the same all right so um, I'm just going to use this probably not the best thing to do but I'm just going to use this much more expensive board to just uh, align the pins to build it to begin with and And hopefully that'll get it all lined up nicely. I'm going to use my flux pen, but I can't find it. Oh, there you go. I'm going to put some flux on this first, I think. There you go, there's my uh, header pins on. Right, let's go off and try and program this then. Or well, let's just uh, put that in there before. Just check that I can at least get something. Get that aligned first. Looking good. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is to program this, is to push the boot select in and then put the USB in there you go doesn't always work the first time when you see the drive letter like there then you let go so hopefully this should be now um, like a USB drive don't know what that index HDM is you can program this using C or Python so it says to go to raspberrypi.org and there's getting started with micro Python and there's this UF2, UF2 file, I need to find it. So uh, I've downloaded that. So that's, uh, let's go back. There's my UFT file, Pico MicroPython. Uh, and I just have to drop that in there. And apparently when you drop it in, that's all you do to program it. It disappears. There you go. So it's disappeared now. And that is now... Uh, ready for Python. So then you go into your Thunny. Let's just close that. Ignore what it says at the moment. That's the code for the screen. But I go to Tools and Options on Thunny, and you have to make sure that you select this Raspberry Pi Pico there, and then find the port. Now I know on this one it's going to be this. That that's the port. I recognise board in FS mode. So if I hit OK now, then you get this little thing down the bottom that says MicroPython. And if you go, uh, if I remember, is it print? Print. Um, hello. I think that's right. Yeah. So that's that's actually the board that's running um, over there. So so. What I'll do now, I'm going to turn it off. So I'm going to turn it off just by undoing it. 
and on the Pymeroni site there's this um, demo.py so um, it's in a github so if uh, it's a bit hard to find um, there you go latest release over here on a github internet doesn't work very well when I'm in the cave so while that's uh, loading I will plug this in and make sure that the USB going in there is the same as the USB there and I've got the pins lined up so all right in we go that doesn't want to load there you go um, and then hopefully see it says back end terminated so hopefully now if I plug this in again always oh, the wrong way oh always oh, the third time all right so hopefully that's on now oh yeah it's on you've just got the um you can just see that little RGB so what I'm hoping is this demo.py I got that from uh, MicroPython examples Pico display and that demo pi there so what you do is just grab that copy this um, and whoops a little bit more not very good at using my Mac single-handedly uh, copy that and then if I get rid of that and put that in there that's that's what I've done all right so hopefully now if I run this so to run this this command I type that hello down there ah oh, look but it says it's disconnected so hopefully if I hit stop yeah I get the little I get the little thing again now I could type that I'll get the little prompt again I could type this um, program in but obviously it's there and you can save the program and you can actually save it onto on onto the, the Pico itself which is quite clever so anyway let's run this okay all right so input error no module named pico display so um this was a problem for me i just went off and nothing said anywhere on the on the interwebs about how to um install a module i thought well i've obviously i need this pico display module this is what i'm trying to import i can type that in import but pico display and it doesn't do anything and then the only instructions it said if you want to import a module to it go to tools and manage packages and then you'll get a list of things here but there, there isn't a list of things so there's, there's nothing there and if I, I did pico display um, and search and at the moment I'm not connected to the interwebs here very well don't know why but um, yeah, it, it never re retrieved anything anyway. Um, so I didn't know what to do. And then at the bottom of oops, at the bottom of uh, the internet, I found something that said actually the modules are within the MicroPython build. But to use this display, you need the MicroPython build that Pi Moroni wrote. And I'm using the Raspberry Pi one. All right. So if you've connected your Pico display to your computer and you're trying to run this um, Pico display demo from Pi Moroni, when you try and run it, if it says there's a module error, it's probably because you've downloaded the Pi software, Spider, you've downloaded the Pi software from Raspberry Pi and not from Pi Moroni. So um, you can find it somewhere, Pi Moroni on GitHub somewhere, and there is a special little um, link to the proper software for this so let's go back to where where i was before 
So download the Pi Moroni software. And the Pi Moroni software is Pi Moroni Pico my, MicroPython. So we've got to reset this machine, reset the this again. So hold down the boot, plug him in. All right, and then there's this Pi Moroni Pico Pi, MicroPython. So let's put that on. Okay. All right. And it's ejected. And let's try and connect on here. So stop. There's the thing back. And now let's try and run it. <gasps> it's beautiful. Look, can you see that? How lovely is that? Look. Oh. Okay, let's do some hacking. So, looking at this program now, um, there's something that sets the balls off. Each of these balls is its own class and it's got a pen. The pen must be the colour. So, this display create pen random, randint. That, that must be RGB, red, green, blue. So, let's get rid of the random because I love blue. Um, so, let's say that's naught. So, the red will be naught. Um, green will be naught. And then random for blue. Let's try that. Run. Oh, look at that. Lovely. I don't like the um, the backgrounds like pink. Um, display set pen, display clear. This must be this must be the background. So let's set that to well, let's set it to black. Oops. Minus, minus, so not zero, zero, zero is black. Let's try that. Oh, look at that. All right, so this is a really nice little display. I like this. And actually, considering each one of those little graphics objects is its own little entity, the way this is running through the code, that's really, really interesting. So what does it do? It, it, it defines a ball class, and then it creates one of these balls. Um... Each of these is like a different size and a different position it starts on. And maybe a direction as well. And then this is this uh, this is a standard thing for moving. Ball X plus or minus ball Y. Yeah. And if it's over the side of this, if it's one way, depending on which way it's going, then reverse it. That sort of thing. And then display that. And then at some point it must go. Yeah. So it goes for every single one of these little ball objects. So moves each of them. So moves them all a little bit, draws them, moves them all a little bit, updates the screen and then starts again. So, yeah. So that's really cool. So, yeah, this is my first foray into MicroPython. But remember, so if you're getting an issue, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.